Good afternoon from Yami B TV. Wishing you all well. Still loads of love as usual. Um, now in the comments, uh, I'm noticing this morning, uh, I knew that I had three or four Leeds fans that have been following me for a long, long time. Ash, Jamie, obviously Dylan, uh, my boy. Uh, Jammer as well, I forgot, because you went missing. I remember now, Jam. That's what I was telling you, my boy. But we had a term for it, and there's others. You know, how can you support a lot, you know, your, your Cockney, blah, blah, blah. term, Cockney Whites. That's what they used to call us. So from the beginning of time, when I used to run from a children's zone as a schoolboy, yeah, to get on the on the coach sometimes at the supporters club, Mr. and Mrs. Fudge, way back in the day, you know, and I was going to be about four foot tall and then, you know, bunk in the train for a couple of, a few occasions I went to Ellen Road as a kid. But then as an adult, I'm realising now there was other games that I went to as well, popped out when I was like um, older and coming out from sentences. Uh, I went to a couple of games and I remembered this morning as well. But no, I am a lifelong Leeds fan, fanatical, never changed my side, never wanted to be uh, no other team apart from, I think, when I was five years old, we was all in the school playground. Me, Marco, Roy, Tony Williams, Tony Kashumas, and Alistair, bloody bloody, but I can't remember his name. I might have left a couple out, I can't remember. Uh, but I think my mate Eggy was there as well back then. And we was, all in the, we was all in the school playground, in a circle. And we drew lots, you know, who goes last, who goes first. And uh, every, if someone got Man United, someone got Chelsea, someone got Arsenal, someone got Liverpool, because, you know, during those times. No, Chelsea weren't so, so big during that time, sorry. Uh, but Liverpool, because, you know, they had them periods. Everybody, oh, I support Man United, I support Liverpool. So I got the last of the lot. We know that was always a familiar tale being the smallest and everything, sometimes I think they fix things as well. But the only team left on offer was Leeds United. But I can't remember if I ever wanted to support anyone else or it was an accident and I fell into Leeds United's lap at that time in the school playground. Now, many of us, James McGregor, you know, my boy Andy, and, you know, many of you our age who grew up with a uh, match of the day um, um, in the early days when... Barry Davis, John Motson, David Coleman, they were the BBC One commentators. ITV had Brian Moore, you had Grandstand with Frank Boff, and you had that geezer with a, a tash, Dickie Davis, James, Dickie Davis. But I was a BBC One man, because I don't know why, because I believe those three commentators were the best commentators that I ever listened to. And, you know, as schoolboys, we practiced things and you know, being the way that I was, I used to like taking off their voices and things like that. You know, that's how deep I got into football. It was a real love of mine. I can remember, you know, looking at the printing, you know, waiting for the final scores to come up because you remember um, Frank Moff used to have his earpiece in grandstand because they said you all kind of cover all sports in those days for you lot that don't know, like badminton, um, cycling, and all in that, that sporting Saturday afternoon. So it wasn't like it is today where you get the results anywhere and everywhere. There was Radio 2 and Radio 5 came much later on and then you had Alan Green and... Peter Jones, a Welshman as well, sadly, rest in peace, Peter. What a commentator, full of passion. Trust me, Alan Green as well, heavy, heavy, heavy commentator. So we only had that. So he used to have the earpiece in his ear and he said, I'm hearing Leeds United and you heart flutters and you wait. It used to be a catastrophe when I was younger, when Leeds used to lose. I saw almost seems like you go to bed and you think, oh no. And then we're like all our favourite players, you know, that we are the hardest shot in football, you know. There was doubt arguments over that because Peter Lorimer was my hero. I, I I confess to that. Peter Lorimer was the one that I really deeply loved as well. And he and he had the hardest shot in football. You know, they had a little match up with Jimmy Case from Liverpool at times. He I think he won it miles per hour or something. But I don't know, Lorimer, better volleyer, I believe. But Jimmy Case was a good player as well. But Lorimer did it at all levels. Jimmy Case, I think, played for Ireland a couple of times. I can't really remember. But anyway, that's another matter. But those early days of Leeds, and up to today, it never really leaves you. Especially when you get in with the crowd. So you think now, you've got James. and you know, he's, um, I didn't even know until two months ago that I could go on YouTube and watch all the 1970s games. You know, with all those commentators, you know, you're thinking back because of all the institutions. I said, oh, I'm not better. I wish I could go to a game. I even used to write from Ellsbury as a kid. I used to write from Ellsbury to the supporters, I mean, to the supporters club at Ellen Road. 
and send me, they used to send me little programs and things for nothing from while I was in jail. So there were ways around to, to getting it, but you know, the emotional states that you can get into for the love of football, I understand. You know, when you look back over, you see now that it means the world, but it's not everything. I know some of you say, but it does, it can get that deep. I swear, 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 it is really, really deep. You don't want to lose. You can carry on into the next day. Now we get older, we know that you have to face defeat, but, those early days at the road where I told you ran away from the children's home, got nicks in Leeds, had to be brought back by the police, into the care, blah, blah, blah. I think I went to another couple of games. I went, oh, I was a bit of a sad one. I won't go into that today because that, that, that same person that, you know, was in the children's home, he took me up there to Leeds. But I said, that's all going to be in my book. Uh, but you know the story about that. And imagine being in there as well, sitting in the, sitting in the stands with him and you don't, you just don't want it near you. And you're watching the game and Kevin Hurd, I think they had a play, play called Kevin Hurd way back in the day, they used to call him Jasper Carra, right? Jasper Carra, but he had a good shot on him. This was the early days, I think this was, that was the team after the, the Bremners, the Clarks, Giles, uh, Mick Jones as well. And of course, the great Eddie Gray and Peter Lorimer in that midfield, all of them capable of scoring great goals. That period there, being a kid, Leeds United from 69 to 74, Glory is. Cup finals, lost in the final against Sunderland in Portfield. Uh, that goal, but I'll never forget Peter Lorimer, that shot. And Mont Montgomery pushed it up onto the bar. It looked like it crossed the line. I remember that was 1973. Sunderland, biggest up, one of the biggest upsets because Leeds were. And that, uh, Leeds supporters, you know and I know, we are a bit suckers for losing to smaller teams. Even up to today, I get frightened when we get a non-league team uh, in, in the cup draws and things like that. Because you go back as far as when Colchester, they had a player called, I think his name was Ray Crawford. Don't quote me on that. But I know his surname was Crawford. He used to score screamers. Um, Leeds went there in a cup tie and I was watching him. And oh, it was like I couldn't. Everything, but we went 3-0 down at Colchester. I think they were out of fourth division or non-league, right? Uh, we got two late goals. Uh, and it looked it was cliffhanging right to the end. And I just cried like a baby. I know because when you're the big team, a winning team, everybody wants you to lose. And in my view, we were picked on a bit, Leeds. But not, not, you know, I'm not going to be, I'm not saying, I'm not biased. I'm telling you now, they used to call us the dirty, cheating Leeds, right? Because of Don Reavy, the great Don Reavy, rest in peace. Where we had that great, the, where we had those great moments. You know, I was watching the game the other night where we, how many passes against Southampton before they could get the ball. Uh, years later, you know, after we won that, we done it in the cup final, Arsenal. And it's not the first time we beat you in an FA Cup final. No, in fact, we beat you in an FA Cup final in 72. Mick Jones crossed it, Coleman commentating, Alan Clark, 1-0. Who put the ball in the Arsenal net? Alan, Alan Clark. Alan, Alan Clark. That's what they used to charm. 69, we beat Arsenal in the League Cup. Terry Cooper scored. So we've we got a good run things with Arsenal in cup finals. We know you get the better of us and not we got you this week, funny enough. But to not know how deep my Leeds things goes because 74, because it was Leeds, Arsenal, Liverpool, 65, 74. Man United weren't in the reckoning. Always a great cup side uh, with Makari, McElroy, when Atkinson was there and Tommy Doherty. Uh, but never, Man United never won a, a first division title for how much years before Alex Ferguson came? Chelsea were completely not even on the map. Even when Kerry Dixon and everyone was there in a bridge, terrible pitch that um, Chelsea, one of my first games. Oh, my, my first away game with Leeds United was at Stamford Bridge. Tony Curry, I think Lorimer, Peter Lorimer was on his, his last bit or no, because he retired and then he came back again. But imagine being a little boy and you've got Tony Curry, who was magic. He had a magic one during that time with midfielders. Glenn Oddle, uh, Liam Brady, magic. Matt Brady, Chippy Brady, Mick Mag. And they, there was a Chelsea midfielder, but he was a one-man team. Butch Wilkins, Ray Wilkins, heavy, heavy midfielder as well. So I'm at Stamford Bridge, but I want to go into the away end because, you know, I've been London schoolboys and everything. You know, the crowd, and I hadn't tasted it to go in there with the crowd because we was talking the other night, man, a few of the boys, and... 
if I wouldn't have been a criminal or a prisoner, I, I can't guarantee that I wouldn't have been a hooligan because I loved all the chanting and, and you know, all the camaraderie and, you know, the adrenaline going and everything. And Leeds, that Leeds crew, um, a man reminds me the other day of the service crew, you know, we don't promote violence no more. But I often wonder if I wouldn't have gone to prison because I would have been following Leeds all that time, I believe. What was I just going to say there? Yeah, so during that time, with that little run there, like with um, Curry, Lorimer, Bre but Bremner's, my, that era was just fading out when I started to go and watch. Do you see what I mean? Because that, that early days, 78, 76, they did the last of that, the Bremner's, the Charlton's and Cooper's and whatever, uh, were all gone. So Tony Curry, after three minutes at the bridge, uh, having wanted to go into the way, but too scared because of the violence. Chelsea had a geezer called Babsy or something. A one arm, one arm geezer used to. Everybody used to try and all the crowd would come rushing because I went to Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham because of being, Leeds being out of London. I used to just go and go and watch football because it was uh, my first love as well as a little bit of boxing when I was smaller, but I was too small, obviously, uh, at that we all had eight, nine, ten, but it was a Four Feathers club across the road. And we used to go and play sports there. But after three minutes, imagine you got a dream all night and all you were thinking, I hope Peter Lorimer scores. I hope Tony Curry hits one. Um, I'm thinking, was Ray Hank in there with John Orley during that time and Arthur Graham? Uh, but I remember Tony Curry drops a ball in three minutes in and after three minutes, Lorimer scores. Uh, and I tried to celebrate in the Chelsea end. And... My two arms on my shoulder because they, they were taller than me. My mates, oh, you damn, yeah, I mean, oh, you know, because you was because you be frightened, you're thinking, you know, the, it, we see it, you saw it. Hooliganism was real bad in them days. But the second lot that came, so after '74, really, we, it, we we had the real misery years, you know, with um, Jimmy Addison, Jim, Jimmy Addison, um, Armfield, Jimmy, I think, good man, Jimmy, very emotional man, uh, really liked him. I think rest in peace now as well, if, I'm, if my memory corrects me, man. Of him. So them dreary days and going to school, I remember before, you know, I started that, the institutional run and, you know, to see us like what, what up and, and then all of a sudden you, you're down and you're, you're going to get relegated, leads all the way down, disappeared till not O'Leary, Howard Wilkinson. So then it all changed then. So I had to be in prison when that run happened. And I was over there. That was running about the times I'm on the local. I've done Armley, Loudon, Grange, around that side. There are loads of lead supporters there. Howard Wilkinson. No, 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 no Howard Wilkinson wasn't there. No, Howard Wilkinson, that was before. The, yeah, that was 92, the last first division. That's when it was Rod Wallace, Chapman, Canton, I was at Leeds, uh, before the drama with you-know-who. And uh, Alex Ferguson nicked him, biggest purchase, and uh, remarkable results for getting him off us. Imagine these, it was like when they sold Jordan McQueen, no, Jordan, Joe Jordan, just in peace, Joe, and Gordon McQueen uh, to Man United as a double when things started to go go wrong. I remember being in Buckley, it's only they came and seeing that. I didn't want Jordan and Gordon McQueen to go there. But Howard Wilkinson came, and we got it because he's a very great tactician. Not everybody's cup of tea, but hey, he was the last man to win the first division title. So I was, I was still running around in the institutions at that time. And that final game, I think it was at Sheffield United, and we won 3-2. Man United lost at West Ham in the week, missed loads of chances. Uh, so we nicked it, I think, because they beat us twice this season, that season. So I thought, not saying they were a better team than us, we, got, we, we ended up winning the Division 1. That's how football goes. At the end of the day, you beat us twice, but you didn't beat some of the teams that we beat, if you get what I mean. So I can remember that there. I can remember crying in cold and leave. Because remember, there's no TVs or nothing in the cell then, so you're watching on the big, uh, and you see Wallace and all of them chat. And when I came out, like, go back a bit before that, because remember the Queen's Pardon, I came out in 1990, forgot to tell you, and I went to the Rumbelows Cup uh, night match. Um, but this time now, I'm taking it, going into the seats, and I'm sitting here, it, the seats is less trouble them days in the stand because remember there was no seats in the other place so I'm out this is before I got nicked for that thing in Knightsbridge and um, Gary McAllister Gordon Strachan rest in peace Gary Speed Chapman Wallace and Dorigo and no not Dorigo Ian Hart and Kelly I think and about Gary Kelly and you had Fairclough and Chris White in the centre. And I thought they were dodgy centre arse when we signed them. I thought they were bit pop players, but Howard Wilkinson turned them into beaters. I was surprised. 
And after three minutes again early on, sitting in my seat, Gary McAllister hit a 30 yarder into the top corner. And I was jumping in the seats, right? Jumping. And this is what I loved about these. It's probably the same with all supporters. Because they all started jumping, jumping up and down with Lee's good. Everybody hugs each other, even strangers. But those earliest times, I wanted to chant and shout. And, but I was too small. And I always wanted to get in with a crowd. I told you the time I went to Filbert Street. Uh, during that time when we was on the downslide, I think Terry Connor was at Leeds. Uh, I forgot my memory, the manager was later. Uh, he had a little run youth team from Leeds from through Terry Connor. Um, you're in a crowd jumping, but you're, you know the chanting, you know marching on together. We're Leeds, we're Leeds, we're Leeds. You know, every time there's a corner and all that. I think Wolves tried to make our, our song marching on together, you know, I'll we'll get back to that one day. Uh, or they say they had it before us, they didn't. I might be wrong though. But yeah, so you're in the crowd at Leicester and you know you have to win because you're fighting relegation. I think I was in approved school then. Uh, that was before, yeah, I've gone back a bit. And um, you know when you're in the crowd, sorry, you're jumping up and down, but you're thinking if Lee score today, yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get squashed, mate. Because uh, those terraces were I've realised now when Hillsborough sadly, you know, a lot, lot a lot of the thing, but a corner came over and Paul Hart headed it in, but I didn't see the goal, but I knew that I was thinking, don't score. Imagine not don't you don't want your team to score because you know you're gonna get crushed, and I got crushed, squeezing up on the thing, had to be picked up by someone, put in, but you know, all the chanting and all the things that went with it. But um, what was it saying? So the crowd, I got, I was addicted to that, you know, that kind of, not the, the hooligan kind of behaviour. It has to be said, because even in prison, we used to have those little alliances. Everybody used to have the differences uh, of uh, their, their football. So then you got that. I got to see that. And then the old Leary babes, you know what I mean? The, and the Galatasaray, we, we, lost a, we lost a couple of our fans when we got stabbed. Um, um, and got to the semi-final of the UEFA. And the Champions League. And two of them got stabbed or something in a fight in Turkey. I think sadly one died. I think maybe they went to court. I don't know what happened. Um, but yeah, they got to O'Leary. All that from a young little baby team. Uh, unbelievable. I said, like, I'll keep going back to that. I love I'm remembering more now. It's a lovely Chapman as well. Wallace was proper. Um, but, but, but the babes, for the young thing, Ian Hart could score from anywhere. Kelly would go down the other thing. Um, Heavy that Jonathan Woodgate. I'm telling you now, if that would have happened with Bowyer, Jonathan Woodgate would have been one of the best defenders, centre rafts that England ever produced. It broke him emotionally. I believe it's not my call to think, or not broke him emotionally, but you know, the, he, the, the nicking and the arrest with Bowyer and whatnot. You remember when all that went down? Um, and, and that and that's when I was in louder, blah blah blah. Oh, he's been O'Leary's babes. There's a geezer called Wiggy, big strong geezer, and Chivy from, from Leeds as well. and uh, they always used to call, call me out into the sick, you know, when the, we always used to meet in the Sky Room and uh, watch it. And that season there, when the two cup finals and near enough pushing for the pushing for the Premiership, but not quite, not quite. We didn't quite get there, but the football that we was playing was something off the Richter scale. But this is my part one of Leeds United because you know I, I like to leave it up there. So anyone referring to anything, I close the story. Uh, I close the story of my beloved Leeds United. Uh, I'm going to be going French. Oh, Fran, my boy. Fran Charles, Manchester. I love you, boy. Don't worry, man. You battered us, mate. You didn't take the prize off me. Fran Charles and his lovely Mrs. Shell. And Big Dave, uh, who works down there. My boy Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's short, but he's funny. Very good, 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 man. You'll see. You'll probably see some of them on the show uh, very soon as well. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep going back and forth, but... That answers the first question about my passion for Leeds. Uh, I think part one, that would be that. But if you want me to talk about anything to do with Leeds, uh, from all the mirrors, some of you that didn't see the mirrors, but you must have heard it, just come and ask me. Uncle Yami will try and remember uh, the best he can. But yep, if that answers you, not, no fraud, Leeds United fan, mate. I am a fanatical 